stay with me, 382. If you don't want to stay, just call along. 382. This season calls us to return that by your repentance we may learn to seek but Christ and Christ alone who by his cross makes us his own. Oh, may the joy of holy land bring us the patience in three paths to live our lives for Christ this day and by his faithful cross away. Come make our yoke of Christ so sweet our burdens Let us pray. Grant, O oh Lord, that we may begin with holy fasting this campaign of Christian service, so that as we take up battle against spiritual evils, we may be armed with weapons of self-restraint. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Even now, says the Lord, return to me with your whole heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rain your hearts, not your garments, and return to the Lord, your God. For gracious and merciful is he, slow to anger, rich in kindness, and relenting in punishment. Perhaps we like he again relent and leave behind him a blessing, offerings and libations, for the Lord your God. You love the trumpet in Zion. Proclaim a fast. Call an assembly. Gather the people. Notify the congregation. Assemble the elders. Gather the children and the infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom put his room and the bride her chamber. Between the porch and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep and say, Spare, O Lord, your people. And make not your heritage a reproach. With the nations ruling over them, why should they say among the peoples, Where is their God? Then the Lord was stirred to concern for his land and took pity on his people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial, Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the goodness, greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt and of my sin cleanse me. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. For I acknowledge my offense, and my sin is before me always. Against you only I have sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. A clean heart create for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. Be merciful, O Lord, Lord, we have sinned. Give me back the joy of your salvation, and a willing spirit sustain me. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Be merciful, O Lord, we have sinned. Reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we are ambassadors for Christ, as if God were appealing through us. We implore you, on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. 
For our sake, he made him to be sin who would not know sin, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Working together, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, In an acceptable time I heard you, and on the day of salvation I helped you. Behold, now is a very acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of the salvation. The word of the Lord. The Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading of the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Take care not to perform righteous deeds in order that people may see them. Otherwise, you will have no recompense from your heavenly Father. When you give alms, do not blow a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets with the praise of others. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your almsgiving may be secret, and what your Father sees in secret, he will repay you. When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites who love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on street corners, so that others may see them. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go to your inner room, close the door, and pray to your Father in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will repay you. When you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites. They neglect their appearance so that they may appear to others to be fasting. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that you may not appear to be fasting, except for your father who is hidden, and your father who sees what is hidden will repay you. The Gospel of the Lord. Amen. Each Lent, when we gather for Ash Wednesday, there is a number of different formulas that we use when ashes are placed on the forehead. The one that many of us grew up with is remember man and your dust, that on the dust you shall return. It was an expression of one's mortality and a final judgment with God. But since Vatican II, we prefer to use the statement, turn away from sin and believe in the gospel, or be faithful to the gospel. Not necessarily the gloom and doom of death, but to reflect upon how to put our lives in more faithful practice in imitation of Jesus. We need guidance for that. How do we turn away from sin? How can we be faithful to the gospel? Well, we do it through acts of penance and fasting and abstinence which we do today in a strict way. No meat, no in-between meals. We plan on giving up something that brings us a sense of pleasure that we will attempt to give up for the next 40 days as a sign that we can do it for the love of God.
And so I would like to suggest that we turn to our blessed Claire for guidance during Lent. Perhaps as you leave church today, and I know many of you have to work, so I'm cognizant of the time, just take a moment and look at that one icon closest to the PA top. It is Francis cutting off beautiful St. Clair's long hair. And then he will shave her head. Claire was one of the most beautiful women in a sissy. Everyone wanted her. And Claire renounced all of that after hearing the preaching of the gospel by Francis. So moved by Francis' words that she wanted to live them more fully. She was only 18. But from that moment on, and as a sign of renunciation of the world that she lived in, the glitzy, rich lifestyle that her parents provided her, she took up a life of poverty and sequestered herself at a convent in prayer. Claire learned to love one another the way that she loved Christ. And she demonstrated it so well through acts of love for the poor and the beggars that came to the convent door. Every morning, when you and I get up, we look in the mirror. Sometimes we see nothing. Sometimes it's pretty scary. Or it could be like me who looks in the mirror every morning and says, Hello, gorgeous. I'm glad somebody laughed at that. But you know, when you look in the mirror, what do we see? Sometimes we see people that are disheveled, people that are tired, people that are worn out. Sometimes we see things we don't like. Many of us cannot look in the mirror and honestly say, I love you. Because you know, you can't love others until you can love yourself and give of yourself. And that's what St. Clair did. And St. Clair, in her writings to Agnes of Prague, another rich woman contemplating the life that Claire was living, and she later opened a convent in Czechoslovakia dedicated to Claire and her lifestyle, with her becoming, Agnes becoming the mother superior. Claire wrote, look into the mirror of eternity. Do not look at yourself, but look beyond into the vision of God. And the greatest mirror that Claire behold was sitting and gazing upon the Blessed Sacrament. This Lent, don't contemplate 40 long days. Don't contemplate, I've lived Lent a year already and I'm not going to give up anything else. Contemplate how you can be more faithful to the gospel by your lives. Come to church. The Blessed Sacrament will be on the altar at least two, three times a week. Take some quiet time during the day and pray. Contemplate the love of God. Contemplate his love for you. And then the temptations go away and all the Lenten disciplines 
seem like they're nothing. A couple commercials. Um, there are times I definitely do not like the role of pastor, and that's when I have to make tough decisions. And uh, this really isn't that tough, but I know some people will find it tough. As you know, they're calling for more weather beginning tomorrow, late tomorrow afternoon into the evening. By the time we go to bed on Thursday, there probably will be at least three inches of snow on the ground. And while we sleep, there will be another three inches of snow on the ground. In light of that fact, there will be no morning mass on Friday at 8 o'clock. Tomorrow we can have mass, everything will be good, the weather won't be bad. We'll try and do a little bit of a Bible study tomorrow. But on Friday, we will cancel mass for the day for your safety. I will feel terrible if someone fell or got in an accident trying to come to church, and I would feel terribly guilty if I get a guilt complex. Also, we know that we canceled pierogies for the day because of the ice that was going to come, and well, guess what? Surprise, we have sun coming through the windows. But now we're talking about six inches of snow for Friday, and once again, I have to be concerned about the folks that come in and work, and they have to come very early. We still need more help. We get more help, we don't have to come in as early. But, ladies, stone me later, but we're gonna cancel parochies on Friday too. I think it's prudent, and I also think it's safe. And my bottom line with all of that is, I wanna keep people safe because I need you in the pews and not in the hospitals. Lastly, the practical thing <clears throat> with COVID and everything else, I'm going to bless the ashes now, but what we will do is like we do on a Sunday, I'll just go right through Mass, and then we'll offer communion. There will be two Eucharistic ministers giving out the precious body of Christ, and off to the side will be two extra Eucharistic ministers who I've already given, four Eucharistic ministers who I've given instructions to. They will place ashes on your forehead. They won't say anything because of the fear of uh, spreading the virus through, through our lips. They're going to touch your head with a long Q-tip and put the sign of the cross on your forehead with the ashes with the Q-tip, and then they're going to dispose of that so everybody gets a clean Q-tip. It works. I practiced on my, my dear Aunt Marie the other day, and she's with us today, so it must have worked. She didn't die, and she didn't run away in fear. So uh, that's what we'll do. So then immediately after Mass, after you receive communion, if you would like to have ashes, you can, you know, have the ashes dispersed on your head, and, uh, and then you can just exit out of here the side door, okay? My brothers and sisters, let us humbly ask God our Father that he may be pleased to bless with abundance his grace these ashes which we put on our heads in penance. O oh God, who are moved by acts of humility and respond with forgiveness to works of penance, lend your merciful ear to our prayers and in your kindness pour out the grace of your blessing on your servants who are marked with these ashes, that as they follow the Lenten observances, they may be worthy to come with minds made pure to celebrate the Paschal mystery of your Son, with Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Say stand
The sign of blessed ashes invites us to respond to God, who calls us to come back to Him with all our heart. The penance of Lent has begun. Our prayers enrich the charity and faith of that penance. For all members of Holy Church, as they repent and do penance in this chosen time, let us pray to the Lord. For the will to discipline ourselves by fasting and self-denial, let us pray to the Lord. For generosity to the poor and the oppressed by practical almsgiving, let us pray to the Lord. For return to the sacrament of absolution and reconciliation, let us pray to the Lord. For all those who are sick and elderly, especially our parishioners most in need of our prayers, and in particularly from all of those still suffering from COVID and from further infection throughout the country and our own county, let us pray to the Lord. For the dead who have entered a state of purification and mercy, for all of our departed loved ones, and especially for Edward P. Levinsky, for whom we offer this Mass this morning, that, that God may have mercy on their souls, let us pray to the Lord. God of mercy and compassion, look upon the petitions of penitent people as we pray for grace at this time. Let us not forget the needs of others and we ask this for your Son, Jesus Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I forgot one other commercial. Um, we have a funeral on Friday morning for Kupi Pogash, Elizabeth Kup, uh, Pogash at 10.30 uh, on Friday morning. That Friday, uh, that's still going to take place. So by a stock gathering for eight o'clock, gives more time for the snow crew to come and clean up around here a little bit too. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer. Fruit of the field and work of human hands, let it become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, let it become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we solemnly offer the annual sacrifice for the beginning of Lent, we entreat you, O Lord, that through the works of penance and charity, we may turn away from harmful pleasures and cleanse from our sins may be made worthy to celebrate devoutly the passion of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are in the holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like a dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time
wine he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your, excuse me, to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Alfred our Bishop and all the people of God. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy especially Edward Lubinsky, for whom we offer this Mass this morning. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, bless Joseph, her chaste spouse, with the blessed apostles, with St. Clair of Assisi, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you for your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who sent your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of the church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May the sacrament we have received sustain us, O Lord, that our Lenten fast may be pleasing to you, and be for us a healing remedy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God be with you and humbly pray. And to thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into the Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the good of Amen.